to spend time with family. I suppose. Uh, Abby, Larry, your room is right down there at the end of the hall. Where's the hot tub? Yeah, right outside your room. Well, that's where we're going to be all weekend. Oh, Larry, don't be selfish. They might want to have sex in it, too. It's all yours. <sighs> this is going to be fine. We know where they're going to be. We can avoid them. It's a big house. It's a huge house. You could have four people here. You could have six people here. What does that mean? Oh, Edward, they've arrived. This is bad. You don't know that. Yes, I do. <laughs> this knot from your hot tub just came off. What are they doing here? I thought they were going to be in Napa. Oh, I thought you said your parents had changed their minds. <laughs> yes, basically, I was dishonest with everybody, and that doesn't feel very good, does it? Can I talk to you? Yeah, Greg, we can talk, and they can talk, and they can talk, and work on their problems, and sort out issues, and laugh, and cry, because this is officially the Montgomery Finkelstein Weekend of Healing. Darn it, can I talk to you right now? <laughs> While we're out there, I want each of you to think of something nice to say to the person on your left. Oh, fair, I got the hard one. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. You probably want to know what the hell's wrong with me. That's as good a place as any. All right, look, I went to talk to your parents, but your mom pretty much whacked me upside the head with a guilt stick, and I kind of got backed into a corner. But then I thought, why not bring them all here together? And I know I didn't go about it the right way, but we have an amazing opportunity here. What, to get on cops? <laughs> We have been caught between these people for five years. We tiptoe around them, we pacify them, we get ourselves all tied up in knots. It's hell. So is it is it just the six of us, or did you bring a, a swarm of angry bees? <laughs> I mean, they have never even tried to get along. This is their chance to make it work. Oh, well. It was an accident. Oh, it most certainly was not. Let's go see how they're making it work. <laughs> what happened? Your father-in-law just hurled a $6,500 lamp onto the floor. You spent six grand on a lamp? <laughs> Edward, please, not now. It was an accident, Kitty. Ed wanted to make a fire, and he couldn't see if the flue was open, and I was bringing him a lamp, and I got caught up short by the cord. What kind of an idiot doesn't realize a lamp has a cord? Larry, and you should know that by now. It's just a thing so worried about her lamp. How about, hey, Larry, are you okay? You are obviously not okay. Is this the kind of give and take you were hoping for? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Events like this give us the opportunity to work on our communication skills. Let's try role play. Oh, please. Dharma, that is a wonderful idea. Larry, you play Kitty, all right? Now, you've just seen yourself break the lamp. Right, and I'll be the broken lamp. We have a broken one. I'll be the man drinking scotch. Okay, well, obviously, Larry, accidents happen. The important thing here is that you weren't hurt. Larry, give me a hug. I don't think he's got her at all. This is nonsense. You broke a very important lamp, and I think the least you can do is offer to pay for it. What happened to Larry? Give me a hug. I never said that. Everybody heard it. Oh. Come on, Abby. I think I got $20 in my duffel bag. Let's start paying them their blood money. How could you humiliate him like that? He's a human being with a soul. Oh! No. I am going upstairs, and when I come down, they had better be gone. Edward? <laughs> And when I come down, I'd better be drunk. 